Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss how to draw shear force and bending moment diagram for a cantilever beam with an example problem. Let me read the problem. A cantilever of 10 meters span carries loads of 4 kN and 6 kN at 2 meter and 6 meter respectively from the fixed end along with another load of 6 kN at the free end draw the shear force and bending moment diagram first let us construct the configuration diagram a cantilever beam of 10 meter span so let us draw a cantilever beam which is of the length 10 meter then it carries a point load 4 kN at a distance of 2 meter from the fixed end so this is fixed end so a point load 4 kN is acting at a distance of 2 meter from the fixed support and another point load 6 kN and it is acting 6 meter from the fixed end so let us construct a 6 kN point load at a distance of 6 meter from the fixed support we got an another point load which is located at the free end the circular return is located at the free end so this is the free end of the cantilever beam so six kN return point load is located here now let us mark the points that we are going to find out the shear force values as well as bending so the first point is A so this fixed point and the next point is B where the 4 kN load is acting and the next point is C here also a point load is acting and another point D where the 6 kN load is acting now let us find out the distance between these two point loads B and C so that is 6 minus 2 4 meter and between C and D this distance is 10 meter minus 6 and it is 4 meter now let us see how to find out the shear forces so the shear force at a point of cut or section means the sum of all the forces on the right side of the cut so here we are going to follow this rule so we are going to make a cut along the length of the beam and we are going to look at only the forces on the right side of the cut and we are going to find out the sum of all the forces on the right side of the cut this is what the shear forces so as far as finding shear force is concerned we are going to move from right and to left that is from D to L and we are going to make a cut when we move from D to A and we consider only the forces that is sum of the forces on the right side of the cut so this is the procedure we are going to follow to find the shear force so let us see how to determine the sign value of the shear forces so this is a sign convention so first let us take the beam is cut at a section ax so if the right side the resultant force is moving in the downwards direction then we can consider this as first is when we make a cut about this x-axis the right side resultant force is upward direction then it is supposed to be negative you have to consider the shear forces so as far as the given example is concerned we have all the load which is directed in the downwards direction so obviously all the shear forces acting in this particular cantilever beam are positive because when we make a cut when you look at the shear force on the right side if it is directed towards the downward direction then it must be positive so this is the sign convention we are going to follow for finding shear forces okay so now let us move from D to A to find out the shear force point D we have a point load 6 kN on the right side of the D there is no forces so what we have to do is whenever we want to find out the shear force where the point load is acting let us consider two points first one is FD1 which represents the load right side of the D 
there is no load so we are considering this as zero kilonewton then we are considering a point ft2 exactly at the point d where the coil load is acting so here a 60 newton force comes into picture so 0 plus 6 60 newton so we have to remember that wherever a point load is acting we have to consider the two points one represents the total resultant force acting on the right side of the point where the point load is acting and the another represent exactly by considering the point two. so here we consider two points the next point is c so now we are moving from this d to c so here also a point load is acting so we are considering two points one is fc1 which is the resultant load which is acting right side of this point c so which is six kilonewton we are considering the same load and then we are considering the another point fc2 by taking account of this six kilonewton point load which is acting at point c so 6 plus 6, 12 kilonewton. Now let us move to the B. Here also we are going to consider two points FB1 and FB2. FB1 represents all the resultant load which is acting exactly right side of the, this point B which is 6 plus 6 that is 12 kilonewton. And since the point load is acting at the point B, the second point represents 16 kilonewton by considering the point load which is acting at the point B. Now let us move on to point A. So here the same load which is acting at this FB2 is considered at point A since there is no other load in between A and B. So it is going to be 16 kilonewton. Now we have calculated all the shear forces. Now let us see how to construct the shear force diagram. Just have a look at on the shear force values what we have found. All the values are positive. So let us construct here this reference line in the extreme bottom of this available space. So this is a reference line and in which we are marking point A, B, C and D. So first point is 0 kN, that is FP1. At point D, we have two values, 0 kN. And the next point is 6 kN. Okay. So now we have considered the two points in the point D. And then at C, we have got two points. One is 6 kN, the same level. And then 12 kN. This is FC1 and this is FC2. And at B also we got two points. One is 12 kN, that is FB1. And then another one is 16 kN. At point A, the load value is 16 kilo. So now let us connect these points with a straight line. So now we have connected all those points with a straight line. So now the shear force diagram for this cantilever beam is constructed. So here we can visualize that wherever the point load is acting, there will be a straight line. Okay. So in order to understand this concept in a simple way, we have taken two points exactly where the point load is acting. That is why we have taken FP1, FP2, FC1, FC2. FB1, FB. Now, let us see what is bending moment and how we are going to find out the bending moment for this cantilever P. So, bending moment at a section or a cut of a beam is algebraic sum of the moments about the section of all the forces on the right side of the section. So, in shear force, we have considered the resultant force on the right side of the section. Here, we are going to consider the bending moment, that is summation of bending moment above the section or the above where we are going to make a cut along the peak by considering only the moment of all the forces on the right side of the particular section. So now, we are going to discuss about the sign convention in the bending moment. 
the first one is if there is a sagging rod here to see because of the load that is the shear load which is acting on this particular p what has happened is the concavity in the upward while the beam is subjected to bending okay so here we make a cut in beam so the load or the force causes the beam to deflect in this manner so here the bending moment is in the counterclockwise direction it is considered as positive so if the bending moment is counterclockwise direction on the right side of the cut then it is going to be considered as positive so this is the internal forces so now let us see another case where the bending moment causes convexity towards upside okay so here you see we call that as it is a hawking bending moment okay if the bending moment on the right side of the cut or the section causes the beam to bend in such a way that convexity towards top and also it creates a clockwise moment then we have to consider this as negative so as far as this problem is concerned wherever you make a cut along this b you see now i am going to make a cut this plane then this 6210 is going to cause a bending moment which is in the clockwise direction so all the bending moment which we are going to call clip as far as this problem is concerned are negative because when we make a cut we look at the right side of the section and all the loads are acting the downward stairs so it causes the beam to bend in the clockwise direction so it is a hawking bending moment so now let us find out the bending moment first let us consider the point d at point d on the right side we don't have any load so it is going to be zero the moment that d is zero kilonewton meter now let us move on to point c it is minus because the bending moment is clockwise so as far as our sign convention is concerned the clockwise bending moment on the right side of the section is taken as negative so 6 multiplied by 4 minus 24 kilonewton meter now let us move on to point b so point b we got two loads on the right side first one is this 6 kN 6 multiplied by 8 and it is negative because it is clockwise and then bending moment of another load this 6 multiplied by 4 it is also negative so the total load is minus 72 kN meter and at point a when we make a cut here so there will be a three loads on the right side of this section so the first load is 6 kN and it causes a bending moment of 6 multiplied by 10 minus this load multiplied by distance between e and c that is 6 multiplied by 6 and then this load 4 kN multiplied by this distance to me so the total moment about the point a is minus 104 kN meter now let us see how to construct the bending moment diagram here you can see that all the bending moment that we have got along the beam are negative so we are going to consider a reference line at the extreme top of this available space so this is the reference line and we are going to make a point a b c d so at point d there is no bending moment which is zero md is zero and then mc is minus 24 kN meter and mb is minus 72 kN meter and ma is minus 104 kN meter so now we are going to connect this point with a straight line so bending moment diagram shows the variation of bending moment along the length of the b you will see this diagram illustrate the variation in the bending moment along the length of the b so when you move from point d to a the bending moment is increasing so i hope 
who have all understood the concept of shear force and bending moment. Also, we know how to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram. Thank you for watching.